Hey guys, today we're back in the survival world and I'm actually going to jump back in time right now because I was going to do this new segment at the beginning of the video, but I didn't really like the way it turned out so I'm just going to go into the survival series episode and then I'm just going to do the new segment differently at the end of the episode. Hope you guys enjoy. And also the video is going to start out with me in our new villager area talking about some future plans for it. So, so far off camera, I dug out this entire area, so we have room to build it all up inside here, and I also built up the starting little module to the villager room, which is just what we have on every other one with a lot of our basic workstations and everything like that. So now I think we could go on to our creative testing world where I've been working on uh, some villager systems, because I think we're going to have one villager system here, which will be the breeder, and kind of like a villager separator so we can get the traits we want. And then we're also going to have a giant villager trading and storage area, probably going all along the rest of this wall, wrapping around here, and it might even be two stories tall. So here's that villager system in the redstone testing world. So we have this guy right here who picks up his carrots, he feeds them to these two, and since they have their beds and their carrots, we get some babies down here, which drop into the water, get washed down to this baby holding chamber, and the babies stay in here until they could grow up or reach the water, and float upwards all the way to this system, where we have this storage system I designed that could hold about 150 villagers, and all the villagers try to go here, which is where you pluck them from when you want to get a guy to trade with. So this guy is the guy that you could trade with, you could put down his workstation right here, see what he has, if it's just a nitwit or something you could get rid of him, or if it's a trade you want, you could save him, and if you save him it puts him into here, and then that's what we're going to take from to put them into the villager trading hall. So this system used to be super useful before 1.14, but now it's kind of a dumb design. I still like it, but the amount of work it takes to build this is definitely not worth what it really gives you. The best way to handle it is just to have a villager breeder, and then just have those villagers that they produce go into a giant trading hall, and then from there in each of the little trading hall spots, you could get the trades you want, or zombieify them, or anything like that, and it probably works a lot better than this system. But I still quite like this system. And here's our villager trading hall now, and this is a design I came up with that I think is just absolutely perfect. So instead of just having your villagers where you could go and see them in a little spot, you actually just have their little faces up on these slabs, which I think is hilarious. So this is what it looks like from the front. We have all of our different villagers. If we want to summon a new one, all we have to do is flick the lever where we want them to go, and they'll get summoned and plopped into there, and we flick it down once they arrive. And now we have another villager in another spot. If I want to get rid of that guy, I could click this button, and on this machine it kind of just drops him, but on the real one it would put him into another little spot where you could either zombieify them and put them back in, or you could get rid of them if their trades are kind of unneeded anymore. So this is what it looks like from the back, we just have villagers in minecarts with their heads in these slabs. So whenever you flick one of those levers, we'll activate this line, which summons a minecart and also turns the rail of the location you pick which puts them into that location, and if you click the button to get rid of them, it just activates this rail and sends them back down this way. And so that's pretty much the way the system works. This is what would link up with the other design. So whichever villagers we want to keep, we would put them into here, and that's pretty much the whole system. So I think that first little villager system down here is what we're going to get started on. I actually got all the resources we're going to need for this thing by filling in everything one at a time with glass, so I can see the exact amount we need to build up all this craziness. And I think we could get to work on this on the survival world. So now back in the survival world, here's all the resources I gathered. Of everything we should need, there's quite a bit, but the one thing I don't have yet is all the smooth quartz, and I think I want to build this a lot of quartz, since it kind of looks like some kind of alien or futuristic system. So I think I want to get all the quartz, and for that, I think we might either want to get some villagers to trade with so we could buy the quartz, or maybe set up a pickle and bartering system so we could get quartz that way, or also just go on a giant mining trip. So I'll have to figure that out to get our final piece of this, which is just the quartz. But there's another thing I wanted to tell you guys about, which is a video I just watched recently, and I think it's one of the craziest Minecraft videos I've ever seen. So most of you have probably seen, and I'm pretty sure it has millions of views by now, but it's Dream's newest video, at least at the time, of one player versus three hunters, and I'll put a link to it in the description. If you guys haven't seen it, you definitely need to check it out. It's insane. So pretty much it's a 47 minute video, so it's pretty long, where Dream is trying to beat the Ender Dragon, but while he's doing this, he's also having three hunters constantly chasing him, and doing anything they can to try to kill him. And what's so crazy is he keeps killing these hunters, and he doesn't die once. And it's just insane some of the moves he pulls off, some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen. 
and I don't want to spoil any of it, but he pretty much jumps straight into lava to avoid the hunters. He's out on a bridge and they're coming at him. He jumps into the lava, does this crazy trick to survive, and ends up at half a heart. It's one of the most intense videos I've ever seen and it's so good. I definitely recommend it, you guys should totally check it out. So I guess what I actually need to do to get started on this villager system is to mark out the exact space we're going to build it in here, as well as gather up the quartz from probably the nether. We could also... Try. Wait, no, that's Milky. I said to him, Milky, you can never join again. Never ever join the world again. I said that. Where is he? No, no, no. This isn't good. The last time this Milky joined, he almost destroyed the entire world. And now I have absolutely no clue where he Hello. is. <gasps> oh my god, what are you doing here? Get it! I have to slay that Milky! <laughs> He's too fast, I can't catch him! Yes, that should keep him away. I don't ever want to see that milky again. So I think I'm going to spend some time off camera really marking out where I want this to be built and making sure that we have room for the wall back here and just everything like that. As well as getting some kind of system to get that quartz, we're going to need I think about 400 blocks of quartz and lots of slabs too. So that's a pretty big amount if we just went into the nether to mine it. And also, if we do reset the nether, then it wouldn't be too big of a deal. So it's kind of a weird thing, but here's one option. We have this guy down here, which is our farming villager. We have him all set up with some pumpkins and melon trades, which I've been getting a lot of emeralds from, as well as getting some golden carrots from him, which is super cool. What I think I might do is up here, I have a zombie villager that I captured a while back. So he's inside of this acacia housing. So what we could do is bring him down into the base, and then we could cure him up, and then we would have the two villagers to make at least the start of a villager system. And then we'd be able to get a good amount to get our mason guys, or whoever it is, to get the quartz trades. And then also to start starting villagers for the villager system. So I think that's probably the best option we have. So let's try to get this guy down there. And getting any of these guys up from there, all the way down to our base, is always pretty tricky, whether it's a little slime or anything else. So I think that we're going to need to do this during the day, so that way we don't have to deal with enemies always attacking us. But that does mean we'll have to have them fully covered. So let's get a lot of blocks to build with, so that way we could build a little tunnel and staircase down. So like I said, I'll be working on that off camera. I'll get this guy down here, cure him up, so that way we can start getting some kind of villager system set up. And I'll probably check back in at that point. And then I'll also mark out the area for that starting thing I showed you too. And I'll check back in when we get some of that done. And with not too much difficulty at all, we were able to get that guy down here. We got him into a cell where we could cure him, and then we brought him all the way over to our other villager. And as you can see, we got our brand new villager started, even with the iron golem that spawned in here. So we have four masons and this one farmer, and I've been working on collecting the quartz too. And we're doing pretty good on that, so we have a decent amount of quartz, and I'm going to smelt all these into the smooth quartz. And then I think we could get to work on our brand new villager system, which I've marked out right here. The only problem is we're not going to be able to do that in this episode. I actually only have a few hours until this video is meant to be uploaded, and I need to get some editing done and the thumbnail for the video done and everything like that. So we're going to wrap this video up with some news of everything that's happened since the last survival series episode. If you want to stick around and hear what's been going on. But if not, that's it for this survival series episode. And thank you guys for watching. So I'm going to start the news off with everything that's non-survival series related. So the first thing is, I got a brand new graphics card, so the video should be smoother and hopefully better than ever, which I'm really excited about and some of you guys have been saying in the comments that it looks higher quality and that's really awesome to hear, so I'm glad the videos are looking better. I also made a brand new little icon for the corner of each thumbnail from now on, and it's just a little blocky Bryson icon, and I'm pretty happy with the way that thing turned out. And another thing is, the channel is just doing awesome, we're at 880 subscribers right now, which is just honestly so crazy, that's a decent amount of people. So thanks to everyone, I really do appreciate it a bunch. And another thing, this is some pretty bad news now, 
is that one of our series, the Apollo Project series, it's over. It was really unexpected, but some stuff happened that caused the server to shut down. And it really wasn't anything that involved me, but everyone on the server kind of said that was it. And that's kind of the last episode I'll have was the Black Market episode. So I'll miss that server and the world and everybody on it. But yeah, it's just pretty crazy and that series is officially over. And then the final non-survival series thing I have is I made a Discord server. I saw that'd be pretty fun. So I'll put a link to it in the description if you want to check it out. So now to our survival series stuff. I got all netherite armor and tools. I went and checked out some of the new 1.16 terrain in this world. And those Bastion remnants are absolutely insane. They're just so difficult to traverse, but they were a ton of fun. So we got our netherite armor, and one thing that I've been considering is whether or not I should reset the nether. Because right now if I go out exploring into brand new terrain, we'll get the 1.16 terrain. And so that's kind of annoying, but the reason I wouldn't want to reset it is we're going to lose all of our farms in there. Which includes our gold farm and our wither skeleton farm and everything like that. So it might be worth it to get the brand new terrain right as we pop into the world, but I'm not totally sure on it yet. And here's just a random bit of information, whenever I'm bored, I come onto the world and go wither skeleton hunting, and we actually have an entire stack of wither skeleton heads, which I just can't even believe still. So I actually say this earlier in the video and it probably makes no sense because it was supposed to be after the news segment. But one problem, I'm pretty sure it's because the 1.16 update, is I think they changed the Enderman teleportation mechanics. So outside of our house we have Enderman spawning, and then they're able to teleport about the 30 blocks down to this floor here. And they're placing grass blocks right where inside of here, and it's a continuous problem. And why I really hate that is it means if I just went an AFK'd here, although it seems like I'm safe with no spawnable spaces and no skylight access for phantoms, it's just that I can actually have that really rare chance that an enderman teleports in here, places down a grass block, a creeper spawns on that, and comes here and blows up the area around me. We could also have a zombie spawn in here and attack the villagers, and it's kind of a weird thing, and I think the best way to solve it is to completely mob-proof the area around here, because I honestly don't know what else to do. And I think for a final bit of information, I have to show you guys something super sad. So in our last episode, it was a while ago, we made a brand new cave for our pet Squishy, the slime, and if we go down, this is the spot right here, I have to watch out for creepers. If we go into here, I'm hoping it's different than before, I can't find him anywhere, I don't know where he is. I'm guessing there was something in here that was able to kill him, and it's just so sad. I think maybe this is a culprit, maybe he was able to get stuck right on this edge and was swimming up in the water and drowned, but I just don't know. I thought this area was definitely going to be safe. But I didn't find any traces of him here. I don't know where he is. He could be off somewhere hiding. He could have despawned because of some weird reason. Or he could have jumped off of something and was able to take enough damage that he's no longer with us. So I think that's it for everything that's happened. And I guess the biggest bit of news I had is just that the Apollo project is ending. I do have some future plans for some stuff to do. And that does mean that we'll be back on the survival world getting some more progress done. And I'm pretty excited for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and in our next video we're definitely going to be getting some work done on that villager system, and I kind of feel like we didn't really do too much in this episode. I also think my next video will be a mini structures, which will be the tiny end city, so we can look forward to that. I almost showed every single design we have for these mini structures, and then after that I think we're going to do some of the 20w infinite snapshot videos, so we can get that series done. I actually have some of that that I just need to edit to get out there. So I guess that's it. Thanks for watching the episode guys. I appreciate it. See you guys.